and you walk into this new environment and people have been doing it longer than you, they may have more experience than you've had, but God prepared you for that place. God called you to that place and that's the reason why you're there. He opened the door for you to even be there in the first place. Hey y'all, so I am fully dressed and ready for church. I'll get like a full body view later maybe. But yeah, I'm so excited. So today I'm gonna be going to church probably gonna come home and cook. I need to do some laundry, but I also wanted to just like chit chat, like sit and have a talk with you all because I've been in school for two weeks now and so many things have changed um, since my first video. I've just learned so much, I've grown so much. But also I wanna talk about imposter syndrome. Like I wanna talk about being in spaces and questioning whether or not you feel like you're good enough to be there, you deserve to be there, all those things, um, which are things that I've experienced. And so I wanna have a talk with you all about that. Let's just have a real grown up heart to heart about that. But first, let's go to church, it's time to go. It is so crazy driving in the car, not listening to music, but I'm like trying not to, so that I can talk to y'all. So this morning I'm going to a church that I absolutely love i have watched online and i can't believe i finally get to go in person i'm so excited to finally experience it because i'm so grateful to technology like especially during this time because i mean it's just prevented so much like disconnect um even though you are still slightly disconnected <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm really grateful though to still have had the opportunity to go to church and to worship and everything like that but um, the fact that I get to experience this in person because like online it's completely different um, so I'm, I'm really 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 excited I'm not gonna take you all with me of course but I will fill you in afterwards oh my goodness y'all church was quite literally amazing and I knew it would be I, I had this feeling I knew that it would be um, I woke up this morning and I felt really tired because I had worked yesterday and my work schedule is just like a little weird this week and I have a paper to write and all this stuff and so like something inside my head was like I'm just really really tired like I can always just tune in instead of going and immediately I talk back to that thought I think it's so 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 important to talk back to thoughts like any negative thought that you have speak back to it but yeah so I was like I'm tired like I could stand to lay here for just one more hour which I totally would have missed church if I did that but I literally like caught that thought took it captive and I said you need to go to church because the word is going to be for you there's a reason why the enemy is playing tricks with your mind right now and trying to convince you to stay home that word is gonna be for you girl it's something that you do not want to miss and so I made myself get up and I got ready and it was so good it was so good it was so so good this preacher he's just amazing he doesn't shy away from teaching biblical truths it's not strictly motivational sometimes it's going to convict you it's going to convict you to obey the word of god and to search deep down in your soul and just kind of test your beliefs and test your actions what are you doing throughout the week and you know you come to church but are you living like the church are you acting like the church outside of these four walls and are you really doing what the bible commands us to do are you believing the way that the bible commands us to believe like just so many biblical um principles and disciplines he talks about and so and he doesn't like he doesn't shy away from anything and I love it and it kind of mirrored what I felt like at school like a lot of the way that he teaches I feel like I kind of get something similar at school like you can just tell he's an amazing bible teacher and so I'm so glad I went it convicted my whole heart like it has me so ready to take this week by a storm yeah I'm glad that that's the way that I started my day so I'm gonna go grab some food and then head home and then we can have a little chit chat we can talk and discuss the week um because there's some things that I want to update you guys on so first we're gonna make a stop at Starbucks because I need some energy um, to get me going throughout this day to keep me going until tonight because I work tomorrow so I have to get this paper finished today um, either today or tomorrow after work but I, I don't want to like procrastinate to the very very last minute so I want to get it like either mostly done today 
we're completely done today. So we're going to grab one of my favorite drinks and we will head back to the apartment. Hello. What can I get started for you? I'll take a strawberry acai. Yeah. Uh, can I get venti? And I'll take it with lemonade. Can I get strawberry acai with lemonade? Gotcha. Yes. And that's it. All right, come again, thank you. Thank you. I absolutely love that drink. It's so good. It's really good with lemonade. <laughs> I like coffee, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's something different of, about like, just a drink that doesn't have that taste to it. You know, he likes to switch it up sometimes. I drink coffee throughout the week because you can't be going to Starbucks every single day. <laughs> So I drink coffee throughout the week, like when I'm getting up and getting ready for school or when I'm getting ready for work. And then I'm like, okay, this is my off day. I am going to just savor a nice, good old drink from Starbucks. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Okay. I <laughs> just came from church. Church? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, no. Thank you, though. Thank you so much. You too. Oh, car. Okay. She was so sweet. So now we need to figure out, like, where am I going? So... You know how like when you have a taste for something but you don't want to get out of the car and it requires you to get out of the car, that's the only thing. Like I kind of have a taste for something but it was sprinkling and I just don't want to get out of the car. You definitely have to pay close attention when you drive here. Oh, Lord, I thought they was gonna hit me. I hate when people like, literally like they break at the last second. Oh my goodness, I almost had a heart attack. Okay. But anyways, you have to pay close attention when you're driving in case someone's trying to T-bone you. <laughs> but also, um, there's potholes everywhere here. And so I'm like, I, I have eyes on the road, 10 and two. So, cause I'm like <laughs> trying to dodge these potholes. I'm like, I'm not trying to be buying new tires every few months. Wash my hands. Wash your hands really quick, and then I'll eat it. <laughs> Y'all know how when you're super hungry and you finally get home with your food, like you cannot even wait to scarf it down. That's how hungry I am. So, I just got something simple. I stopped at Chipotle, and I got a chicken bowl, which I'm proud of myself because I really, really, really wanted a steak bowl but I have not been eating steak. I have not eaten red meat. I haven't eaten pork, any of those things. I have not eaten them in weeks. I don't think since my trip to Turks and Caicos, I haven't eaten that. Um, and like, I probably, I, I don't know. I don't wanna lie. <laughs> I don't wanna lie. So I don't know if it's like a lifelong thing necessarily, but I do wanna cut back. Like I wanna make sure that I'm not eating you know, pork and red meat all the time that occasionally I may eat it. So like I've been going strong, I haven't been eating it at all. So we'll see where it goes. Like I'm not making any declarations or anything like that. Cause I don't know. Cause bacon is good and so is steak. So I don't know, but I've been eating turkey, chicken, seafood, all the salmon, all the shrimp. So we'll see how long this goes. But I'm about to devour this bowl really quick. And so I'm not rude and eating while I'm talking. I will be right back. So I am finished devouring my chicken bowl, but I kind of just wanted to talk to y'all about life today and just um like i said those feelings that i think a lot of us battle where we get into spaces and we question whether or not we are meant to be there whether or not we're good enough to be there whether or not we're competent enough to be there and um just tell y'all a little bit of my updates uh with school and everything like that because 
so much has happened so like I said it's been like two weeks and going into school I was nervous because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do when I got out um but it kind of gave me some reassurance when I talked to my pastor and I was like I don't really know what I want to do when I get out and he was like, a lot of people don't know what they want to do when they get out. <laughs> and matter of fact, most of the people that I went to school with didn't know what they wanted to do when they got out. And I was floored by that because, you know, going into college, I was like, I have to know exactly what I want to do. I have to finish within four years. Sorry, y'all, I'm washing clothes and my washer gets loud sometimes. But um, yeah, I wanted to finish within four years. I had a plan and I had a plan for myself. <laughs> we could go on about that, but... Um, yeah, and so I just was set to this certain goal. I'm very, very type A, and I like to be in control of things, and I like everything to work out the way that I want it to be working out. Um, so, yeah, but then with this, it kind of felt weird because I was like, I don't really know, like, the time frame that I should finish this in. I don't really know um, whether I should know exactly what I want to do. It feels weird not to know exactly what I want to do. It feels kind of like... I don't know contradictory of like going to school and picking a major I don't know just all of these things were going through my mind but I was so so grateful I was grateful to be there like no matter what comes of it no matter what happens like I know that I'm here to learn the word deeper to grow deeper in understanding and in wisdom um, and to adapt some tools that will help me to do that throughout my entire life not just during this two year three year whatever is gonna be time period um, so yeah, I'm, I just went in just like super happy, super grateful. And y'all, it has gotten better every single day. It's crazy, crazy. So you start every class out with the professor praying for you. So just imagine like the people who are leading you and guiding you praying for you every single day. And they even tell you like your advisors and your professors will let you know I prayed for you before you even got here like as soon as we got your application I started to pray over you and it just makes you feel I don't know it just makes you feel like so special so loved so cared for um, and it just reminds you of the love of God and how you're always on God's mind and he's always um, you know concerned about your journey and I don't know it's just it's, it's a beautiful thing and so we always start class with prayer um, and so just imagine like on my Tuesdays I have two classes and then after those classes I have chapel so your chapel happens every single day and it's just great like you get to go to a service that's geared directly toward you toward students and so the messages like they'll come from people that either um are serve on the board at the school our professors at the school or sometimes they'll have people that um, graduated from the school years ago and now they hold positions other places but they'll have people come in with these messages that are for students whatever you may be feeling right now whatever you're gonna see whenever you get out into ministry like they make messages for you which is it just blew my mind like there was one message about integrity that was really 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 good I mean they just use amazing illustrations and they always tie it back to the Bible um, there was another message on like your dream what is the dream that you have for your ministry if you could dream of anything um, you know what dream do you want to leave this school implementing just so many things the last one, oh my gosh, the last one was so good, I almost forgot to mention that one. The last one was about the least of these and how all of us are the least of these. And that kind of ties into what I'm talking about today. At school, it's absolutely great, but I noticed very quickly that a lot of people that I'm in school with have gone to biblical schools throughout their lives and so it's very different for me like whenever I got my first degree my first degree of course you all know is like in something that's rooted in science nursing healthcare, and so it's something completely different than what a lot of my um, comrades have gone to school for a lot of them have gone to Bible colleges and their first degree was in that and so they're you know going on to get their masters or going on to get their doctorate and that's not the case for me <laughs> which is completely fine but sometimes you can't help but to wonder okay like 
is this going to be hard for me because I haven't had that background in studying? Like, yes, I've studied the word on my own. Yes, I've, you know, started Bible studies and things like that. But, you know, your mind just starts to play tricks on you. Like, how much do I really know? Am I going to be behind? Oh, my goodness. Is, am I going to struggle more than everyone else? Am I going to need help? Is it going to take me way longer? And those ideas, those thoughts in your head are just straight up tricks of the enemy. Um, one thing that I love about school is that they speak to everything that you may possibly experience. And it's so crazy because whenever they bring something up, whether they're like, okay, this may happen to you. You may be thinking this. This is what you need to do to avoid this. It's always something that you feel convicted by because you're like, oh my gosh, I, okay, that's me. Or, okay, I can see myself maybe dealing with that in the future. So, yeah, I don't know. They speak to that as well. Um, the president of my school actually teaches one of my classes. I feel so privileged to be in one of his classes, but he even spoke about it on the first day. He mentioned in class that a lot of us are in different places. And he straight up said, a lot of you have gone to Bible colleges. A lot of you all, this is the first Bible class that you've ever taken. Which now I'm so thankful that I ended up graduating from a Catholic university. And when I switched to that university, they were like, okay, you have to take religious studies courses before we can allow you into the nursing program because it was just a requirement of the university and I took the Old Testament and so um, I've taken two courses in biblical studies before which I'm like oh thank you thank you thank you thank you but it just kind of sparked that in me to continue studying anyways but yeah I mean he says he even says all of those things to us and he's like it doesn't matter where you're starting it doesn't mean it's going to be easier for you. It doesn't mean it's going to be harder for you. We're all trying to attain the same exact goal and it's okay. You know, don't feel bad for where you are. Don't feel lesser than for where you are. And that relates even back to the message of the chapel that we had that the least of these are called to do God's work and called to disciple. And so we're all the least of these. None of us are better than the next person. We're all created in the image of God. You know, um, we all fall short of his glory and he can lead and direct any one of us, any one of us. And so there's no like totem pole. And that was just an amazing reminder for me. And that's something that I wanted to share with you all as well, because, you know, you don't even have to be doing ministry. You could be doing anything else. And you walk into this new environment and people have been doing it longer than you. They may have more experience than you've had. But God prepared you for that place. God called you to that place. And that's the reason why you're there. He opened the door for you to even be there in the first place. And so I just want to encourage you. And there's so many biblical examples of this. You know, Moses feeling unsure about himself and not wanting to speak and asking God, like, please, like, are you sure I have this speech impediment? And then Aaron ended up speaking for Moses. Um, but God was like, you still have to get out here and do the work, so, right? And so we're not alone in those thoughts where we're like, are you sure? But I think it's also important to remember that God equipped Moses. He said that he would direct what he was going to say. He was going to use what he already had in his hands. And so I think it's so important that we remember that as well. That God has equipped you. He has equipped you for where he's called you. Why would he call you if you didn't have what it takes? Or if he wasn't able to use you. If he wasn't able to work through you. So maybe you don't have what it takes. Maybe you aren't strong enough. Maybe you aren't witty enough. Maybe you aren't knowledgeable enough. But God can step in and make it so, right? We are vessels and he can work through us. And so, yeah, I don't know. It was just a great reminder that, okay, I may not have the same background as everyone else, but I firmly and truly believe that God wants me to be here. I feel called to this place. And I know that with him, I can do anything. And I don't think that he would have given me this dream or this vision, um, you know, without everything then I need to get it done. And so I'm so excited about this journey. I, I feel like every time I talk about it, I'm just like, mm -hmm. but I really am. It's opened my eyes to so many things. Like the discussions that we had in class, let me tell y'all about class, an update on, um, you know, the structure of class and everything that I'm doing and everything right now. Okay, so I'm taking four courses. I'm taking 12 credit hours which I discussed with someone there and she was like, wow, that's a really heavy load, especially with you working. And I was like, is it a heavy load? That's crazy. Because I took, you know, 12 credit hours in undergrad, probably more than that sometimes. And it was nothing. And I was working, I think I was working almost full-time hours until I got to the nursing program. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. And so um, 
Yeah, so I'm like, we'll see how that goes. But I've learned that, you know, different people are taking different amounts of credit hours. Their loads look different. People's lives look different. You know, some people have families and they have spouses and they have a ton of responsibilities. Um, you know, there are some people, there are seriously some people that work two jobs, have a whole family, have a wife and are in school full time. And I'm like, whoa. And so I think it's just like finding, you know, what you're comfortable with and what your time management skills look like. Because some people are pros at time management and some people aren't. Um, and so just being honest with yourself about what you can do when you can do it. Some people are like, I'm going to finish this degree in six years. Some people are like, nope, I'm going to finish it in two to three. And so it's really just all about you. One thing that they also talk to us about and push is that it is not about grades, which is so hard for me because I'm like, it's not about grades. I've always been like, I wanted to make amazing grades <laughs> because I grew up thinking like, if I do well, I am good enough. I am better. You know, I am all of these things. I'm valuable. I have worth, all of that, whatever. They're like, no, it's not like that. You know, we want you to soak in the information. We want you to be able to apply it, but we don't care if you make all A's. It doesn't bother us if you don't make all A's. You know, we just want you to feel like you're soaking this stuff up and it's changing the way that you feel and it's changing the way that you believe and it's changing the way that you go out and minister to people. Yeah, that's very encouraging. And so I'm still gonna have to work on that a little bit because I, I mean, I'm gonna be real y'all. That's so hard for me. That's so hard for me. We'll see how that goes because I just feel like, you know, grades are a measurement of how well you're obtaining the information and applying it. I don't know. I don't know. That's gonna be a struggle for me. Y'all please pray for me with that. Um, another thing is like, they will tell you a whole book. Hold on, I'm gonna show y'all a book real quick. Okay. So say for instance, this book. I feel like you can't even see how big this book is. Let me see how many pages this book has in it. Okay, there are about 300 pages in this book. They will give you a reading assignment and be like, okay, this book is due to be read like you have like a week or a week and a half and I'm in four classes. So like say I have like four whole books, you know, and it's not like that in every single class, but it is a lot, a lot, a lot of reading. And so I've had to kind of like, I've watched like all of these speed reading videos on YouTube and everything. Like I've had to like train my mind not to read word for word, um, but to just kind of skim everything and pick out what I think um, or what stands out and then go back and kind of like hammer the things that stood out into my head. So I'll like go through and I'll highlight and I'll make notes as I read. And then I'll go back and look at the highlights again and like type up notes. Um, and so that seems to help me to remember, but I can finish something super fast, which is crazy. I'm like, I've been missing out my whole life. I could have just been skimming everything. Um, but yeah, they even tell you, they're like, don't read word for word because you will never get the reading done. So I'm learning that as well. Um, and then class, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but class is very, a lot of conversations. And so, of course, like the professor starts off by leading us and they lecture us on whatever you've read or whatever information they're presenting. And then about halfway through, we do discussions. And so it's just so intriguing to hear people like throw out their ideas and throw out how they're understanding things and, you know, throw out scripture and just share their experiences and their life in class. And it's just amazing um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so glad that I'm on campus because those discussions I feel like I don't know if you would necessarily get the same impact online but um, yeah just I don't know you just feel like such a connection and you're learning so much and so I just love it I love that class is set up that way and every single class is set up that way um, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. All the discussions, all the teachers are super sweet. I mean, that's pretty much how it's been so far. Uh, like I said, I have a paper to write. I actually, mm, it's 4.05. I was going to go to another church this evening. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it because I need to finish that paper. Well, yeah, maybe I'll go next Sunday. Oh, next Sunday I'm going to be out of town. Well, that's church shopping for you, <laughs> you know, just out here going to all the churches trying to figure out which one will be for me. 
uh, but yeah that's pretty much just what I wanted to catch you guys up on and kind of update you all on and encourage you to if you're feeling like like I said if you're you know experiencing something where you just feel like I don't know if I belong in this space just remind yourself every single time you have one of those thoughts or every single time that you're not speaking up or you feel like you're shrinking yourself to fit into a certain environment because you don't know if you should say something because you don't even belong there. Mm, you belong there. Who are you to talk negatively and to talk down to God's creation? You know what I mean? Like we have to remind ourselves that we were created in the image of God and that he's called us, he set us apart, he's equipped us. And so whatever space that you're in, allow your light to shine and just allow your brilliance to shine. Allow God to use you. And so I just want to encourage you in that as you go out into your new week. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in and keeping up with me. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and subscribe below so that you do not miss the next update you don't miss the next vlog or whenever i feel the need to post a bible study or whenever i feel the need to finally post my move to dallas i also want to post like an apartment tour once i finish everything which may be forever from now but yeah tell me what y'all think below do y'all want to see that stuff 